Shalom, my brothers and sisters. Brother Karash, coming from Mount Zion, 144K. We out here representing all the camps of Israel, coming from the all the unity camps of the 12 tribes of Israel, coming out of Mashara Yashara, Mashara Yasha Allah, House of David, and coming out of um, Sons of Thunder, and all the unity camps that you know your names, y'all you know who you are, that's trying to unify under Yahawashai Mashiach, who the world ignorantly knows as Jesus Christ. This is another episode. I've done many of these tapes like this. And um, Shalom, my brother, brother from North Carolina, first one coming on. Okay, it's going to be a whole lot more because usually in a day or two, there's like hundreds. So this is, um, I did this also. If you go into Spartans are Hebrew Israelites, I did a tape like this years ago. Um, Shalom Colon and Fisherman, um, where I laid out the information. Instead of just looking at me all day, you know, you can look at the information and just see what it is. But you can go on YouTube and look up um, um, Spartans and Hebrew Israelites. Got all the proof. Just going there. I'll be laying out just like this. You can see the books and everything. But today's subject is uh, Naphtali, the tribe of Naphtali, the sixth tribe of Israel, who are the Israelites. And they are the descendant or the people that are sparsely located in Argentina and Chile, south in Israel, I mean, south in America here. And then from there, they ventured out on ships, some of them along the Pacific coast when they came to America uh, during the time of the 10 tribes in 605 BC, they came here. 722 BC, they went in captivity under Shalmanassar. That second Ezra was 1340 to 45. And then 605 BC is when the Persians, Medes, and Babylonians attacked the Assyrians, right, and descendants of Shalmanassar. And that's when the 10 tribes that were remnants, when you go in the Behistin Wall, it represents and it writes Shalmanassar in 722 BC. He lays out that t almost 30,000 of the 10 tribes he brought with him over to, over the waters to um, Assyria, which today is northern Iraq. South of Iraq, you have Babylon. That's going towards the Persian Gulf. So, quiet as kept, Negroes, not Negroes, some Negroes, scattered scatterings of them. Because remember, all the ten tribes did not go into captivity in 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 Babylon or in Assyria. There was some left in the land. Second Chronicles 30th chapter, Luke 2:36. Read it. Tribe of Asher, sister, Pan, uh, married to the priest Panur. You know, what was she doing during crisis time? I thought they were all over here. No, not all of them. Some went to Europe. Some were stayed in Judah with their husbands. Okay. You know, it wasn't a clean split when the 10 tribes split from, from, from Judah in the south. And some of Judah was up in north. And they didn't come down south with, with uh, David and, and Judah and Benjamin. Or David's descendant who was Rehoboam coming out of Solomon. Understand that. That's why you read in scriptures, you know, and read in history about blacks over here in America. There were some scatterings and remnants of Judah already here. I know the records, the Moors, the Washita, I understand all of that. There were Negroes here, the, the Omec heads, okay? The Indians who were the Hispanic Latinos, natives were, were, were still honoring the kings of Judah and putting up them Olmec heads because they knew they were Negroes, okay? It wasn't that they were all Negroes here because you see the brown skin brothers here. They're of your other tribe. You got to stop this division, okay? The natives of the Americas are not a mixture of blacks and whites. They were looking like that. There's records before whites even came, 
okay? Those are the Chun tribes who were carried away captive out of their own land and came here. Okay, in 620, 605 BC, the Book of Mormons mentions it. The Mormons are took the ten tribes identity and trying to say they ten tribes up there in Utah, right next door to me. I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada, and they right next door, and I be getting a lot of stuff now. Most of them put me right where I need to be at, so I, so I can get that vibration and get some of these records out here. The Paiute Shoshone Indians out here. I'm gonna go check them out pretty soon. I like I, I, I like to see where I'm at. So I can go to where Israel's at, wherever I go, and get what I need to, you know, expose the lies that's been taught to us. So, first of all, this tape is Pacific. It's called, uh, what did I call it? I, I named it. I forgot it. Pacific Israelite. Okay? Israelites in the Pacific. Okay? We've been taught in the past that... Um, only uh, Jaffet is Pacific Islands. That wasn't proven. I mean, I believed it, you know, but nobody's perfect. And I don't knock my elders for teaching that because they were close, but they didn't have the rest of it. And now there's different, not just me, it's the wise men that left this information. I'm not wise, I'm just gathering stuff, listening to y'all. And I'm putting it on tape, <laughs> you know. Ain't nothing wise about that. I'm just throwing it out there and y'all take it to where it got to go. But the brothers showed us who Nat Thali is. And it's the brothers in the Hawaii, Tonga, okay. You can write it down. Hawaii, Tonga, Fiji, New Guinea, Samoa, Polynesia, okay. The Ma they all comprise of the Maori people in New Zealand, okay. The people on those islands. And it shows you how they got there. So we can't sit back and be ignorant. Oh, they're not, they're Jaffin. Where's the proof? Well, I'm going to show you the proof that they're not Jaffin. Because the scriptures don't say that. Scriptures tell you that you have um, the, Pacific, the, the, the Pacific area consists of three areas. It's a triangle, okay? It's New Zealand, it's Polynesia, and it's Easter Island. Then you have the other areas, Melanesia, and you have Micronesia. That's more where Japheth's at, some Israelites out there. But as you read the scriptures, Israelites were prophesied to spread to the north, the south, and the east, and what? West. Pacific is in the west. We're in the four corners of the earth, and that's where we're going to be saved from. And this is what I'm going to start this off with some of the the natives of the Pacific and whites, okay, of that land who lived there. And, or actually lived there, but they invaded and explored. And this is what they're saying about it. Okay, I'm just going to bring off the records, then I'm going to go into scriptures. Okay, so you can get information. So when someone asks you who the tribe of Naphtali is, you can go, you can prove. Not just say, oh, that's Japheth, oh, that's this. You know, we have, we have, we're supposed to be wise people. We're your house people. Those whose forefathers are of Negro and native descent, indigenous throughout North, Central, and South America, and those of them scattered in the Pacific, Atlantic, Africa, all around the world, the most high going to raise them up, you know, are the 12 tribes of Israel. A lot of them be coming on my show. They be from different areas of the world. Some of those Israelites. You know, the Limba, the Ebu, okay? We have to bring all that in. And I just leave it there until Christ come. I don't know. We all doing this. We're not, we should do just so walk by faith. Not always by sight, okay? I Meaning when we're checking out who these tribes are, our eyes are open, but what insight do you have to the tribes, Okay? And the sight just means walking by your eyeballs. You got to walk by that third eye. And the third eye is what brought me to this. Okay? That's what that sight really means. Because we all walking by sight every day. You know, walking by sight, you're going to bump into stuff. I mean, it just makes sense. So he means the insight, the third eye. Okay? The spiritual sight. The sight of Christ. The sight of the Holy Spirit. The sight of Yahweh himself, who this world knows is God. This is why all you brothers are coming out with all this information, okay? 
about these tribes of Israel. You, I mean, it's a miracle that the Negro was bringing this out, okay, that who the Jews really are. Ain't nobody else teaching this from Africa, East Indians, Chinese, Japanese, Ethiopians. Ethiopians are supposed to be some Jews. They're not Jews. How come they ain't bringing all this stuff out? Okay? They do not have the Ark of the Covenant. They're not Jews. Solomon did not go down and lay with Sheba. Okay? That's not in the Bible. Zephaniah 2 and 12 is all I got to say about Ethiopian Jews and, you know, Hela Selassie. <laughs> That's all I got to say about them, because they ain't dropping no, they ain't opening no, no scrolls. We're, we're, we're opening seals here. All you schools and brothers and brothers teaching on here and the elders and, 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 and the camps, brothers teaching on Facebook, all you brothers teaching are bringing out or opening seals. Oh, so you know the nations open up nothing but what they hear from us teaching. Because the Jews were destined to be captives in um, Babylon, and now they're coming out, okay? So here we are, coming out, okay? Let me get this little thing off of here. Somebody's kind of calling me, but it's obscuring the picture. Well, I can't get it off now, but I'll leave that there. So let's read about Nat Valley. You know, our native brothers, and how they the one that tribes of Israel. And if you go into pictures of the Maori people, the Tonga, they look just like Negroes in any ghetto in Compton, all the way to Brooklyn. <laughs> look, I'm looking at them. They are people. They're not Africans. They look like any Indians that you see. Look like any Puerto Ricans that you see. These are Israelites. Okay, references of the tribe in that family in Hawaii which they're all called the Maori people. Maori come from the word Moors, the Moor people. So y'all know what that leads to. The Moors are Israelites that convert to Islam, then they spread out from there, and you see these Moors from North Africa. Mainly they convert to Islam, but some of them didn't, but they were all called Moors, and they went out and they linked up with other Israelites around the world. And then, you know, um, Scholars called them Moors, but they didn't call themselves Moors. Moors is not in the Bible. Moors is not in ancient history. Christ didn't come to save the Moors. He's coming to save Israelites who have taken all of these names. Moors, Negroes, Asiatic. Asiatic is a Roman name. You know, think it's an Asiatic black man. Or a, even a black man. There's no original black land. Okay? He calls himself African American. So where is the African American nation at in Africa? Where is that at? Where'd that come from? You made that up. Okay? That's all you did? Who are you for real? And Africa and America are two names of two white men. Leo Scipios Africanus and Amerigo Vespucci. Look it up. So you're not two, you're not, you're not descendants of white people. You know? You're still taking on the slave name, calling yourself African American. But you got to deal with that ID for now. You got to use that to do what you got to do to, to move and maneuver and navigate in Babylon, in Rome, in, 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 in uh, today's Nazi Germany. You got to show your papers, okay, of who you are. Or you ain't getting that job. You ain't going to have this and that. So we got to maintain for now. All right? One book, Vikings of the Pacific by... T. Rangi Heroa, or his, in essence, his, uh, this is a brother from um, Easter Island. And Easter Islanders with those big Moy statues, that's spelled M O I A I, they were Israelites also. Because they first came from the West Coast and then went out the Pacific in their ships, which a white man can't even make them now. You know, we're going to show you that. Same way he can't make the pyramids, he can't make the cities how we made cities. He can't do nothing how we used to do because this is an inferior. This is a copy of the majesty and the technology of the ancient world. It's totally flipped. Now, everything is, is in the dust. This is the serpent eating the dust, crawling in the grass of high levels of living. Okay, this is not the high level of living. Okay, of eating, of making love, of, of, of you know, technology. Everything's polluted. So this is... His real name or his name that he take on is Peter H. 
Buck. He's a Maori, but his Hebrew name or goes back is T is T E R A N G I Haroa, and he writes his book Vikings of the Pacific. I had the book at one time, but it was lost. You know, I moved around so much. I don't know what happened to it. Okay. Then you can read another book called Africana de Brosis, Encyclopedia of African American Experience by Henry Louis Gates Jr. All of us know him. He mentions a little bit in there. I'm going to bring this out. Here's a page from that book here. I'm going to bring that out later on. Native Americans in the Pacific by Sakana mentions that they were Hebrews. Stepping Stones by Edgar Cayce, Readings on Lost Tribes in the 15th century. He mentions that Naphtali was in Samoa. Okay, straight up. I got the page right there. Okay, we're going to read that later on. The World's Last Mysteries Reader's Digest, 1976, speaks about the Pacific people being Israelites, the lost tribes of Israel, history of the myth. By Tudor Parfit, Chapter 9, Doomed to Wonder, Lost Tribes in the Pacific in New Zealand. Okay? Here's the book right here. All right? We're going to, you know, we're going to look at, look at that a little bit. I got the book. It tells you right in here. All kind. They had temples, purification rites of the Jews. They kept the Passover. They knew about David's wars and Joshua's wars. They had the Genesis account. Okay, they had prophets and priests. They had a holy place. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just ridiculous. Okay, this book by this Russian guy. So you got to be white boys at the most high turned down the demon in them and they bringing stuff out. So you can look at that book. That's just one book. I have, these, I have some of these books that I'm mentioning, but right now I'm moving so they're not with me. I'm on the move. You know, so here's another one. Alverdo D. Mandana, Pedro Fernandez D. Quiros, okay, sailed from Peru, Port Calo, hearing stories of colonies in, in, colonies in the Pacific. Okay, so this guy mentions the Jews. New Zealand and its inhabitants by T. Ika A. Maui. Maui is one of the lands of Hawaii. This is a Naphtali brother. The Polynesians were, were the tribe of Naphtali. They, Naphtali is all up in the Pacific. And we're going to read that in the Bible. 1855 by Richard Taylor. Speaks about the Israelites. That's why I wrote these down. This is stuff I gathered over the years. I started doing this in 2015. Okay, this is how old this paper is. And I just started getting books, talking to brothers, and bringing it out. Okay, um, Captain James Cook, 1769, he arrived in New Zealand, paved way for this idea, meaning Captain James Cook. He went there and realized these are Jews, and people started going there to see what he was talking about. Samuel Martin, 1765, 1838, Angelican clergyman, was an early champion of Israelites in New Zealand. A British missionary visited New Zealand, declared Maoris have Israelite origins. Okay? Maoris priests lead their war parties and spoke Hebrew. The Maori chief beheaded opposing chiefs in battle, like David beheaded Goliath. Other missionaries followed him, okay, in his rule. I mean, this is over here in New Zealand. The Maori people, okay, in the Pacific, descendants or one of the names of the Polynesians. Arthur Thornson, 1816 to 1860, Army Surgeon, 1838, says Maoris are Jews. Look, language, lex, uh, lexical similarities. I mean, he was just documented it. Richard Taylor compared. Japanese and Polynesians and concluded that, hey, these are Hebrews, but not the Japanese. But he was living with the Japanese and seeing all them islands off the coast when you read this book, because he, he goes off and tries to mix them with Japanese. That's where the white man gets that the uh, Indians of America came from Japan and China, 
That's a lie. The Japanese don't teach that. I talked to Japanese. I talked to Chinese. They don't teach that. That's something that came out with some Russian guy named Vitus Dane Baring in 1800s. He took a ship up there and they named the strait after him, Bering Strait, Vitting, um, Vitus Bering, um, Vitting, Vitus Dane Bering. That was his name, Vitus Dane Bering. And they named after him. He went up there and he was in a ship and they just named after him and they seen the ice up there and they said, well, this must be where Indians came from. But how is Israelites going to come from a warm climate, go all the way up through Asia, okay, through, you know, the Siberian tundra, women, children, and walk all the way up there in this unstable ice bridge, not even prepared for that area, okay, nothing but ice and snow and moving brick ice. There's certain times of the year you can't even go up there because it's a little warmer and ice breaks up. You can't walk across it. But there was some mythical ice bridge that they walked across. And then they came on down through through the, uh, the the North Pole and down through with women and children now, okay? And whatever they had coming from a warm country of Israel and Middle East. And they came down through those lands. And then they came to the Americas. That is all made up, okay? There's no evidence linguistically in archaeology that the Indians are linked up with the Asians. Asians don't even teach that. That should be a key one. Ask an Asian, ask the Chinese. They'd be like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, Asians are very knowledgeable. They have a lot of history. The white men didn't mess with them until long ago, and they're still very close. And they should have some records of people leaving there and coming here in America. And they don't. Okay? So the hell with that Indians being Chinese. Okay, shoot, black folks look like Africans, but you know y'all ain't no Africans, you know y'all Jews, so stop that, oh, I see the cheeky-eyed Indian, he must be from China, and then you just listen to the white man, you only talk to a Chinese about it, you just listen to the white man. Wake up, Israel. Robert Louis Stevenson called Polynesians God's best, at least God's sweetest work. Tall, golden skin, straight or wavy, but rather fuzzy or woolly hair. They have fine features, almost intimidating physiques, and a soft, flowing language. Okay, the more that book goes in Israel, I'm going to show you the document over here. In their blood frequencies, the Polynesians, like North American Indians, differ from almost all other peoples of the Pacific and Asia. Uh-oh, this is a guy talking right here. Thus, there can be little doubt that Polynesians in general have ancestors in common. Okay. So this guy is just going into how these people are not like everybody else in the Pacific. Maybe the other ones more west. That's Moab, Ammon, Japhet, you know, and some of those peoples. But the ones in Polynesia and the ones in New Guinea in these lands, Samoa, Fiji, Tonga, some of New Guinea, the Tasmanians, these, I'm going to show you tonight, the records show that they were Israelites from the guys who were there, eyewitnesses. Okay? Ancient Panama, Chiefs in Search of Power by Mary W. Helms. If you get any of these books, they're going to mention that these people have Hebrew origins. Preface, in order to develop further certain points, which we only briefly mention by the conquistadors, I sought etho, ethnographic analogies with non, you know, um, I forget what, I can't see what this word is, non with people, with, 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 with some of the chieftains, particularly those in Polynesia that might be structurally comparable with the ancient Panamanian um, politics, Colombia, and native descent. Okay, the coming of the Maori, 1925. Okay, check that out. Coming of the Maoris. Okay, Vikings of the Sunrise, 1927. Amazon.com books. Hawaii, Iowa, first king discovered, kingdom discovered, Hawaiian Polynesians in Isles. 
Okay. But you know what I want to drop? My brother, um, as I've been, been planning to do this for like a month, and it just happened today I was going to do it. And I'm reading earlier from my brother who's part of Mount Zion, one of the officers and, and, and fellow disciples in Christ, okay, Yadawad Banyamya. And I was online and he dropped something. So I got to, I, I listened to that like all day. So I just dropped some of the references that he had put out here about, you know, these people from Black Simba. Okay, this is online, Black Simba. And he mentions, you know, what I said earlier, and I was going to bring it out anyway. I already had written, and I already had Black Simba down there. I mentioned, I seen that a long time ago, but, you know, I really, I don't know what happened. I lost that, or I got it some of my records, but he just reminded me of that information I had on this from a while, a while back. Six son of Jacob, I build her of Rachel. That's who Nat thought he was. He was a brown-skinned man who was a brother of Dan, the Danites. My next tape, I'm going to do on the tribe of Dan. I'm going to do Dan the same way as this. I'm going to show you information. You make up your own mind in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you know, the Spirit teaches all things. And it said, Nathali means my wrestling. Okay? So here are some of the books that this brother brought out concerning the... Um, Maori people, okay? Let me see if I can find that page. Yeah, this is it right here. Okay. Some of these books that came out on this um, this thing by Black Simba, Manly Hopkins' book, Hawaii, the past, present, and future of its island kingdom in the Sandwich Islands account, Polynesia, 1862. Speaks about Polynesians being Israelites, Ivan Van, Ivan Champion Journal on New Guinea, Explorers and Company, Interior, New Guinea, 1872, 1928, Jewish features, they show that the features of the Jews were Israelites, okay, and that he met in an Israelite king there of the, this sub-tribe called the Bolivip, tribe, the Bolivic tribe of the Jews, and there was a Tasmanian chief. They killed the Tasmanians off like crazy over there, him and this Bolivic people. And he, the dude spoke Israelites, he spoke Jews. The dude mentions that the features and culture was Israelite Jews in this book by Ivan Champion, who went out there and spoke to the, to, to the Tasmanian and their chief. Sister, white woman I'm thinking here, Jacqueline Ryle notes Judaism in the Fiji Islands. They represent Holy Covenant. They had chosen chiefs. The Vanua was a name in their language that means land is one, the first land, the first peoples. I mean, it just links up Israel, the Garden of Eden, the first land above all lands, the first people, the chosen of the most high. You just got to fill it in when you read the whole book. And, you know, another book here, Asil, Asil Sila, Ravuvu, Director of Pacific Studies at the University of South Pacific. This is a Nap Valley brother, and they got him set up in there, and he's at access to records, South Pacific. He was a Fijian. He was, he was, set up in the Fijian Senate and the Grand Council of Chiefs in 2001. He brings out that he's an Israelite. He's a professor. This Israelite brother, Maori in the Pacific Studies, set up. Okay? He says, no doubt, Tonga, the Tonganese, the Tonga people are Jews. They celebrate the new moons, the Tapu people, also a sub-tribe of the Tonga. They celebrate the Feast of Iniji, or, or, or I-Naji, I-N-A-J-I. And it's a feast totally comparable to the first fruits or the Feast of um, uh, Pentecost. They have circumcision rites, burial rites of Jewish. When you read 
in um, John 19 and 40. They have unclean and clean laws with their meats. Okay. They kept the day of atonement, which we just passed that. Okay. They didn't stop and they were closer to, to Christ than we are far away, but they were right there and, you know, in the middle of it and they kept it. Okay. Women's uncleanness, purification and purity. They kept the Jewish laws. They had cities of refuge. That's a deep one. Meaning if you were convicted of a crime that, you know, is not death and you're waiting for your, your court case, you didn't sit in the Rikers Island in Brooklyn. You didn't sit somewhere. You just stole a backpack and you sat somewhere waiting for your court date for four days or a month. You was allowed to live in this city, you know, and you couldn't leave it. If you left it, then you're guilty. So you stayed in the city. You know, or if you murdered somebody, you no, know, if you kill somebody by mistake, the family wants to kill you, that's natural. You make it to the city, the Levites there protected you. Even though they didn't have Levites, they set it up like Israelites. That's the only way they knew how to live. Tula was the name of the Tonga's high priest. They had high priests, had the holy place, they had temples. This man spent 10 years in central Polynesia, which also was called the Friendly Islands. This man named Thomas West, 1865. This book, 10 Years in Central Polynesia. This is what I wrote down from what um, the brother, I, I guess it's a brother, um, Black Simba laid out from his records. I'm just laying out records. See, I'm, 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 a, I'm a collector. And I was the librarian and collector in the ISUPK in New York. That's why I got a lot of stuff that, you know, the priests and the leaders, you know, would put out. And I would just take it, record it. If they needed it, hey, I got it, you know. And so and me and two other brothers was doing that, you know. So I want to leave their names there because <laughs> something might happen to me and they got the stuff I got, you know. Because most high made sure this, these records were kept. This is how the Bible got to us by brothers who was keeping the records. You might have had Jeremiah, you might have Hosea, and brothers had these records in different places. But um, then when Constantine, the black Constantine, came on the scene, he called them out of hiding because they were being persecuted. And they brought all the books and they brought it into the Bible. Constantine was the King James of his time. But was it for Constantine, King James would have had nothing to work with. Okay, the Bible wouldn't have been here today if Constantine would have didn't do what he did. It wasn't perfect, but the Most High, he don't always choose the perfect. He choose those he can trust. And the power Constantine had, and he came to him personally like he came to Paul. Paul was wicked. Constantine was wicked. These brothers were wicked. Like all of us are in sin. But these brothers saw the calling, and they did their job like y'all should be doing, like I'm trying to do. No matter who you were, is who the Most High call you to be now and who he wants you to become. That's the great striving. We can easily sit back and say, you wicked, what are you teaching the Bible for? Well, the white man teaching, you don't say nothing to him. The Most High calling sinners to repentance. So sinners, you better stop sinning, wake up, know you're calling if you're like, I don't, the Most High don't care what you're doing, but what are you going to do for eternal life? Okay. White man don't care what you do in this world. He don't care what you do. He don't care if you drop dead. Okay? You know? So we have, but the most high cares, he wants you to rise to life. You Negroes and natives of the Americas and as we see in Polynesia. This is from a um, record right here. It's from a book, um, The World's Latest Mysteries. I'm going to get the better page here. There's a better page of it. The World's Latest Mysteries, Reader's Digest, Tribe of Naphtali, in Asher, 1976. Okay? And this tells you the Polynesians were magnificent navigators from the original homeland in Southeast Asia. That's where they lying. They moved gradually eastward, reaching Hawaii, New Zealand, and East Island. See, this is the main place. These are Israelite stuff. But he lying about the Southeast Asia part because then he says, okay, Sometime in the beginning of the Christian era, 
kind of right. It's really you should say 605 BC, but you know they started moving. They got here to America in 605 BC, but then later on in the Christian area, they began to go out to, to the Pacific after they got across America. America is a big continent, so I can believe this. This is believable. Okay, that they started going to the Pacific because the prophecy said that we would go to the West. But here's the part that they throw in here. There is a dispute theory of additional contact with Peru. So they're letting you know, look at this little sign here, how they know there was some of the brothers, people of these islands were coming from this, from America. They weren't all coming from this area. That's Japhet, Little Moab, but not a whole lot. You don't even see Chinese talking about that. You don't see Indonesians who was Jaffa talking about that. So you can see this sign right here. I want you to get a good look at it. It shows you how some of the Pacific people came from America, the 10 tribes spreading to the west and the east. I'm going to get it real close so you can really see it. Okay, and there's a dispute. But we read a dispute because a white man's covering up the truth. The dispute is the devil, like the devil disputed Moses' bones and wanted Moses' bones. Okay, look at that. So these are the things that, these are the records right here that I'm showing you, the books you got to get to really prove what's going on out in history. Let's go into the Bible now, and let's start from Genesis 28. I'm going to go into subscription. I'm going to go through some more um, evidence. These are, these are more evidence and books that I got from Black Simba. He drops it. I'm going to drop some more, but I want to go into the book of the Lord, you know, before maybe this tape cuts off or something happens. You know, you all know. But uh, Genesis um, 28. Okay, Genesis 28. I'm just going to go in the spirit. I got records here. I'm going to the spirit. Genesis 28 and what to pull out first. This first one I'm pulling out, Genesis 28, 13 and 15. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, power of Abraham, thy father, God of Isaac, and the land wherein thou liest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed. This is Jacob, whose name was Israel. And um, here, he is given a prophecy of his 12 sons, Okay. In thy seed, meaning the descendants, who the father's seed, the seed is the sperm, the woman is the womb, she nurtures the seed, the earth is the, the womb, the man is the seed, he plants it into the earth, okay? And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and in thee, and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So that's why you see all over the earth, whenever the Negroes and Indians, Hispanics are, they're blessed. Okay? Even when they're cursed, these nations could not be great without the Israelites living there. Okay? We are the blessed people of the Most High. Let me go to James 1 and 1. How these tribes are not destroyed. They're destroyed for lack of knowledge, but not for the seed the Lord said would spread to the east, the west, the north, and the south, okay? But we're dealing with the west now. The farthest west, no one really talks about it, bring out records, is the Pacific. That's the tribe of Naphtali, with a little bit of Asher there, but mainly Naphtali. James 1 and 1, is servant of Yahweh and of the Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad greeting. So he was aware of his brothers who were scattered abroad. Even Yahawashah was aware of the tribes who weren't there during that time he was there. It was only Benjamin and Judah and mainly Levi in the land. Levi were the Pharisees and priests, some of them. There were Levites who weren't all. All Levites weren't priests. Some of them just, just regular people, okay? So we're looking at that. Like, like John the Baptist, he was... Yahweh Shai's cousin. Okay, so you know how that went. 
you know, they had different fathers. I think it was because for him to be a Levite, his father was a Levite, but his mom was Jew. And then Christ's mother and father were both Jews, okay, Mary and Joseph. And they had sex, and they begot um, Yahushua. That's why Elizabeth was um, Mary's cousin, you know, because their mothers, I think, were Jews. But John's father was Zachariah the Levite, and Yahweh's father was Joseph the Judite. That's how that goes down, and that makes sense. And Joseph was the line of David. That's why Christ called the son of David. The Lord don't lie and say, well, that's my son, and I'm going to trick everybody and say, it's Gabriel's son, or it's the Holy Spirit's son, or it's God's son. Which one is it? Okay, he can't be all three. So I just, you know, I just want to throw that out with that immaculate conception, deception. That's all that is, man. You know, it's easy. The Most High can make a divine seed out of anything he wants. Okay, the woman's womb is full of blood. I'm talking about the man's seed is sinful. Bible says you please ask is 25, 26. The woman is the beginning of sin in, in, in her and in her, in her we all die. Okay? But you're getting on, well, he had to make it, he had to put his seed in there because the man's seed is sin. Well, in Psalms, I think it's uh 51 and 3, it said, David said, I was shaken, shaping in iniquity, and in sin did my mother bear me. So how was the woman's unclean too? Okay? We all unclean, man. We talk about acting like Mary was clean, so Christ is all right to put for Yahweh to put, you know, his divine immaculate seed in him. But no, he couldn't come through Joseph and fulfill prophecy that David would come through the seed of Joseph through the male line, like Matthew's one and one says, okay, in Matthew's one sixteen. But let me just slow down on that and get John ten and sixteen. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. So who are those other sheep that are not of the fold? He was talking about the 12 tribes scattered abroad, okay? The brother went out in the Pacific, the 10 tribes over here in the Americas, which was called a Sabbath then. Another one where they know about their brothers. It was only three tribes in Jerusalem and scatterings of the 10 tribes. I'm going to show you there were scatterings of the 10 tribes. All of them didn't come here. I'm going to give you one scripture and there's others, but I just want to give you little pieces and y'all do your own research because you're going to find it. Okay? John 7, 33 to 35. Then said Yahweh unto them, yet a little while I am with you and then I go unto him that sent me. Ye shall seek me and shall not find me, and where I am thither or there ye cannot go. They said, the Jews amongst themselves, whither will he go, that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed amongst the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? This is twofold. He's talking about where Christ is saying, really, he's going to die and go to heaven. That's why he can't find him. But really, Yahweh Shai, there's records. I wish I had my book here book by, called Stolen Continents by Ronald Wright, a Gadite brother, Cherokee, and he mentions, you know, that the Israelites are, are holy people. It doesn't go a lot into it, but he mentions, you know, how there's this prophet named Wovaka, okay, and another prophet named Hanson Lake that have a dream to where this black man with woolly hair was walking across the Atlantic. And in this dream, he came to them. He said, I am the savior, okay? I am the great savior, he said. And he said, I've come to give you knowledge of salvation. But he told him, you got to stay away from the white folks. Stay away from the white man. He's going to hurt y'all. But y'all ain't going to listen to me. But y'all going to go into captivity? But I'm going to come back in the last days and I'm a savior. And then this black man walked back across the water. This could be talking about that because the Indians do have records of a savior. When you read about um, Quetzalcoatl of the Aztec tribe of Issachar Israelites, 
the Mexican brothers out there, okay? Those brown skin, beautiful brown skin brothers and sisters out there, and some of the old Mech and the Toltec, they speak about Quetzalcoatl being a savior, and they have an image and writings of a crucified man in their archaeology and other archaeologies, and they speak about them being Israelites. I have another book by um, the conquistadors and the missionaries spoke about Issachar being Mexicans, being Israelites, Essex being Israelites, different books on that. One by Ronald Sandler's called um, Lost Tribes of the Promised Land. This come to mind. Read that, okay? Um, Lee Huddleston, Origins of the American Indians. It tells you a Sabbath in Amer is America and the Mexicans are the tribe of Issachar, Israelites. You see? So this is what the Most High has given us to understand about these tribes. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. Let's get back on track. Isaiah 43. Dealing with Naphtali. First verse. But now, thus said the Lord thy power that created thee, O Jacob, who is Israel, he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art Mine, four to eight, since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee, therefore I will give men for thee and people for thy life. A lot of these Gentiles and a lot of stupid Negroes and Indian Puerto Ricans are dying now because they just don't want to wake up. They want to keep fornicating and being wicked, okay, and going against the laws of the Lord. They want to do what they want to do in this world. They don't want to humble themselves. They don't want to atone for their sins. I mean, Christ, he is atoning for our sins. He gave us grace. But you got to do your part and walk the grace and be worthy for it. You don't sit there and just be wicked and wait for Christ to pick you up and take you the rest of the way. You got to do some of that atonement yourself. Fasting is one of it. Keeping a day of atonement. After that, atone, atone periodically. Matthews 9, 14 to 15 explains that clearly. Okay? This is since it's a day of atonement, I'm going to bring that out. People are saying, well, you ain't got to fast that day. Christ covers us. That's just like, well, the old law is don't eat pork. Well, Christ covered that. He didn't eat pork. He cut the law. So now he's gone. So we can eat pork now. Okay? Because Christ fulfilled that law of not eating pork for me. Yeah, you just keep on eating pork and watch how fat and clog your arteries get your brain bust from aneurysm, okay, in 10, 20 years, okay? Christ fulfilled it. He did his part. But y'all being like children want to question the law. Children, why I got to go to bed at 9 o'clock? You don't even want to talk to me. Just go to hell of bed, okay? Christ said, don't eat pork. You don't eat pork, okay? Don't question him. He knows why he said that. Even the devil telling you don't eat pork. He tells you to keep, keep, keep the day of atonement, keep, keep the Sabbath. Don't question it because you want to just go and keep other Sabbath and go establish your own righteousness. Do what you want to do like a little kid. I want to stay up past 9 o'clock. Okay, well, I got to go to bed 9 o'clock. Okay? Y'all want to just break the laws. You want to do the laws that got it in captivity. Now you want to keep just going crazy like, well, Christ covers me so I can be wicked until Christ comes and makes me righteous. And then, and then you look down on us who's trying to keep the law as best we can, okay? And, and you're not walking in the spirit of Christ. You're breaking the old and the new covenant by hating on us that's trying to keep it real. It ain't no burden on us, burden on you because you want to be wicked. Ain't no burden on us because we're letting that burden go. I'm not eating pork. Now my health is good. I can teach good. I'm keeping the law. That's step one. Then step two. I dress the part. Step three, I keep the holidays. Then I go into the moral laws, the civil laws. We learn those. If you can't keep the law, you better be teaching it. Okay, we know we can't keep it all, but you better be teaching it. And don't teach nobody against it. Because you're going against how Christ lived and what he died for. Okay, he died keeping the laws. You're going to tell me. He died so we, we can go buck wild out here. Okay. Bestiality, pedophiles, homos could, can just go crazy till Christ come back. And then here come Christ. Okay, I'm switching up now. <laughs> okay. 
Y'all tripping on this law done away with, man. So many people going to die because they just won't get in order with the 12 tribes of Israel being the natives and the Negroes of the Americas. Fear not, I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. Okay, I'm in the Pacific Ocean. You Tongas, you Maori people, and you Hawaiians, the Polynesians, you Israelites. You repent, you can be a part of this number. I will say to the north, brothers of North America, give up unto the south, brothers of South America, keep not back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Stop knocking sisters. Y'all coming in too. We ain't going to just a man kingdom. Okay, we fell together, we gonna rise together. Brothers, treat your sisters right, man. Even if they ain't right, you still got to love them because they're still daughters of the Most High. No matter how wicked they are, you got to take a piece of that heart that might have been broken. You still got you, you, you still got some parts intact, okay? Boom, you got that. And then you're done. David Tolman is for that. Boom, you give it that and you keep it moving, man. You got, you got people who you mad at, you put it out there. You atone for that, okay? People you been this is the, this day of atonement season in the seventh month of the time to think about those you may have offended and put it out there that I am I forgive me. Okay? Forgive those. Okay, forgive your debtors as you, as you forgive your debtors. That's part of what Christ said. Those are trespass against it. Because Christ has forgiven us. So we have, we have this is the day, and every day you do this, this is a major day when you remember in the Heavens are just open a little bit more where you can really um, hear those prayers and get and, and have a thick, you know, receipt of repentance from your spirit to the heavenly world when you do them on the Most High's holy days. All days are the same, but the certain days the Most High just listens a little more and it gives a little more blessing. Don't you all want that? It can't hurt to fast. It don't hurt not to fast, but it don't hurt to fast. But you act like, oh, you fasting, brother. You going to the old. No, I'm not going with the Old Testament. I'm not doing all no rituals in Leviticus 16. I'm just fasting, doing what I can. I know I can't be the Levite thing. I ain't no Levite. Brother trying to, well, if you can't do this, then you why are you doing it? You wicked. Okay? Why are you wearing fringes? That represents the law. Well, Christ wore fringes. He kept the law. He was perfect. Okay? The laws represent, the fringes represent the laws of Moses and the laws of Christ because Christ got his laws from the Old Testament. Matthew 19, he mentions six of the Ten Commandments in Matthew 19. Okay, if anything, the fringes represent that. But y'all see somebody with fringes right away. Oh, you on my team, right? But if he ain't got fringes, but he may believe like you believe, but he ain't, but, but he ain't got fringes. Oh, this person you know, must be on my team. You with fringes? You're not on my team. You got fringes. The guy might be more down with you than the guy without fringes. People judging on fringes. You got fringes? You're wicked. Okay? No fringes? Oh, you must be in the love of Christ. And that do be a nigga homosexual pedophile as hell. But y'all seeing the guy with, with fringes must be the wicked one. Okay? We got to get above that, man. Matthew's 9... 14, 15, we the just shall live by faith, not totally by sight. Y'all breaking the new covenant already and we ain't even in it yet. <laughs> okay? We still building to it. A lot of y'all ain't loving. You're not forgiving. Okay? You're not having grace and mercy. You're not teaching the truth. So don't tell me you better than me because, you know, I'm wearing fringes. Give me a break, man. Matthews 9, 14, 15. Then came to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often? But thy disciples fast not. And Yahweh shall say, If unto them can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them, but the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from him, and then shall they fast. Okay? So we're in that fasting time right now. Christ was with us. Okay, you got that. When Christ was with us, they didn't have to fast. Christ fasted. He fasted 40 days. He kept the atonement. But he was kind of 
you know, breaking down on it because he knew it was deeper than that. Because he's the one, he was, he was covering all that. But now that the bridegroom is gone, Christ is gone physically, now is the time to fast. Now is the time to keep the Passover and keep the Sabbath in these days, okay? And if you can't keep it, you better be teaching it. Most, I don't want, want to see nobody playing them like, you know, oh, I can't keep, you mean you tell me it's a burden just to take a day off, but yet some of y'all going to take days off from work when a white man tells you and you have your, your get togethers and you may fast then establishing your own righteousness. But then the Lord say to do it. And it's just as easy as when you take off from work, it's just as easy to take off for the Sabbath. But yet, oh, I, I can't eat the Sabbath because that's the law of Moses. The law of Moses is evil, okay? Well, Christ <laughs> kept it and it, it, it made him perfect. I don't know what hell universe y'all coming from, <laughs> you know? Romans 5, 10, 11, for if we, for if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to Yahweh by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in Yahweh through our power, Yahweh Shamash Yah, by whom we have now received the atonement. Okay, so it's all combined because Christ walked according to this book. The new one even written yet for y'all to be going to Romans and stuff. It wasn't written yet. He was going by the Old Testament. So the old is just an extension of the new. The two terms of old and new testament, okay, didn't even exist. Christ never said that out of his mouth. He was walking according to the laws and the scriptures of the prophets. This, the old testament. The new is really just the Bible. I don't see it as a new testament to me. It's a new covenant, it says that. But we are still working towards a new covenant as we're working towards the law being in our inward parts. Okay? So we have to get that right. So this is something, you know, that we got to put together. Isaiah 11, 10 and 11, okay? Because you, you ain't getting away from the law. You ain't going to sit here and pick and choose what laws I should keep and not keep in your own mind. Okay, Romans 10, establishing your own righteousness, but not dealing with the righteousness of the Most High, the law, what Christ kept, the laws of Moses and the laws of the New Testament, which is not the law of Moses. Okay, the love ain't new, the mercy ain't new, the truth ain't new. Yahweh gave the laws to Moses. Okay, you saying Yahweh's wrong, and Christ got to fix what what Yahweh did. He gave the laws to Moses. Moses make them laws up, commandments up. That's very dangerous, man. Isaiah 11, 11 and twelve, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set His hand again the second time. To recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, and from Egypt, and from Paphros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the Isles of the Sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Okay, I keep bringing out these four corners because I want y'all to get in your head about these uh, movings towards the west coast of the Israelites. Okay, I'm going to get that scripture. Actually, I'm going to read it right here. Some of these scriptures here. Let's go into some more scriptures. Okay, I'm just going to give you a breakdown. Okay, as you read on the front page that all of the Polynesians are not from Jaffa or Indonesia, but some are from South America. South America is inhabited by Naphtali, the 10 tribes that came out of America, uh, the Assyrian captivity of 722 BC, all the way to 605 BC. The 10 tribes got here, the US by ships across the Atlantic Ocean and came to Osarith, which today is called America. Second Ezra 13, 40 to 45, Second Kings 17 chapter. The Jaffa and the Israelite Naphtali Union fulfills three scriptures. Okay, because you have this, this is Jaffa in, in, in the land, but no scriptures. Okay, they just say it. That's not totally right. Okay, 
In uh, Genesis 9, 27, Yahweh shall enlarge Japheth, who are the Indonesians, Java, Javan, in those areas. When you read Genesis 10, 1 and 2, Medaya, one of the sons of Japheth is me. When you read Judith 2, 1 to 3, in the 25th verse, during the time of Nebuchadnezzar, and Israelites were in captivity in 586 B.C., this Babylonian um, leader over Assyria, he was called King of Assyria, but he's a Babylonian, Ethiopian, he sent out all his allies to conquer all the known world at that time. Okay? And one of those was Japheth, and it tells you Japheth in Judith 2.25 was south. That was Medea, the Medes. They were with the Persians, and they pushed south. South is near Arabia. Then go further in Arabia, because Arabia was Ishmael's land. They went further down, down into Indonesia, which means Indian Islands, okay? Then Java from Javan, they were coming from up in Europe, somewhere up in Europe, okay? In Greece, Israelites kicked, um, kicked them out of there, and a lot of brothers over there, they fled to their, their brothers in the Medes. Japheth was known as the Minoans, Mysians, and Tomars, and some of the kingdoms were Canossus, okay? And there's books you can buy, one called The Cultural Library by Tom Life Books. It mentions how Japheth were long-haired, black-haired, brown people. They weren't white people. Whites came in after the Jews kicked them out and displaced them. Then Romans and Greeks came in, white Romans, and kicked out more of Japheth, most of Japheth, fled to the, the east with the Persians and Medes. Then they, when you read in Judith, they went down into, and because they were, Japheth was pretty much in ships a lot. So they were able to flee to the Far East, right? Some of them are in Asia, because all the Asians are not Chinese people. Some of them are brown-skinned people, like Tibet, Malaysia. They don't have chinky eyes. That's Japheth over there. But the other chinky eye ones are Moab and Ammon. And then there's Japheth in Japan, you know, the ones who ain't got the chinky eyes, brown skin living out there in Asia. And then the ones down in the Java Islands. You know, some of those Filipinos are Japheth. The Filipinos are a mixture of Moab, Ammon, and some Japheth. Okay, and some remnants of Israel, I'm reading that. But as you read, you're going to see. All right, so, and you read Ezekiel, the 27th chapter. Read that. I'm not going to read it tonight because I'm going to keep this on that Valley. But those are the scriptures. If you want to study Japheth, study the scriptures and what the scriptures say. Just don't let nobody tell you. I'm giving you scriptures to read that tells me where Japheth is at. And they would do well in the tents of Shem. Meaning Shem had many sons. Shem is just not Jew. Shem is Ishmael. Shem is Chinese and Japanese. Shem is uh, Assyrians, Asher, Iraqi. You know, they come out of Shem. And Japheth is with them. Okay, that's what that really means. This doesn't mean Shem as the white man is Shemek. This is Japheth amongst him. Whites was up there in Europe and mixed with Japheth. That's why they got that look. Okay, some of them. All right? So when you read Ezekiel 27, it tells about Japheth being, you know, was into everything. They were traitors, they had some slaves. They were doing this. They was in everything. They was in Greece. They was in Rome. They were everywhere, you know. So they the one in the tents of Shem, Ezekiel 27, fit, fills that, you know, and they're still here today. Yahweh so enlarged Japheth, Indonesians, and those other people that I mentioned, and he said the one in the tents, living areas of Shem, mainly amongst the Israelites, but other Shemitic nations, Japheth is amongst them. Okay, there are about eight nations of Japheth, not just the Jews, not just the Negroes and Indians, not just the white man who was, who was Shem. Okay, Deuteronomy 33 and um, 22. Okay, it says, In a Naphtali, he said, O Naphtali, satisfied with favor and filled with blessings of the Lord, possess thou the west and the south. So you get in a geographic location. When that valley was in Israel, they were living in an area in north, Israel. Later on, Romans called it Phoenicia. The Phoenicians were Israelites. Romans called them Phoenicians. They were Israelites. Okay? 
But then when the 10 tribes came over here, right, when the 10 tribes split up, Gad went north, and you had Issachar, Zebulon, were in Middle America, Central America. Asher went to Peru and Brazil, and then that valley went furthest west, as the scripture in Deuteronomy 33 and 22 tells you. I'm just, I wrote it down here, so sometimes I may not be able to read it, but I want to just read it. Make sure that's 22 or 23. It looks like a three to me. I'm going to make sure that's what it is. So I want to make sure this is right for y'all to get. These are the records. These are the facts. Okay. It's nothing that you got to be a, you know, Yale scholar to get. You just got to read a little bit and sit your behind down and stop smoking, drinking, and watching TV and get off the iPad and read the scriptures. 322. It's, actually, it's 23. So I was right. That is a 23. So let, me, let me make that right for later study. That's 23. It is a three. Look like a 22. Okay. So it says, In Naphtali, he said, O Naphtali, satisfied with favor and full with the blessings of the Lord, possess thou the west and the south. This is what Moses was prophesying the locations and characteristics of the Israelites. So it says, Naphtali, satisfied with favorable blessings in the lands of South America, Argentina, and Chile. In the islands of the far west Pacific. It's nice out there. I got to tell you about Hawaii and Pacific, where they had the five islands of Hawaii, Maui, you know, and all them brothers out there. It's nice out there. The word Pacific itself and the word pacify, which means calm. They're always a calm people, okay? Everything the Most High prophesied and saw, okay? Japheth dwells with Shem, not down in Israel. Okay, but in the Polynesian Islands, you know, those are Israelites. And you're reading about Indonesia and some in Micronesia further west, those are Japheth, Lobin and Moab, okay, and Ammon over there. But we're dealing with right here in the circle, the triangle of Polynesia and the Tonga, like I showed you the map, you're dealing with Israelites, Tonga, Fiji, Samoa. Okay, New Zealand, Maori people, Easter Island, that's all the tribe of Naphtali of Israel, North, Central, South America. Okay, let's go to Genesis 49. Okay, I'm just going to read it. I got it written here, but I'm going to read it so y'all can see it. Genesis 49, and Jacob called his, one and two, and Jacob called his sons and said, gather yourself together that I may tell you that which may befall you in the last days. See, the moment said talking about Latter-day Saints, they're getting it from here. Meaning, this is talking about the prophecy of who the Jews would be. When you read this, it don't fit Africa. It don't fit Europe. It don't fit white people. It don't fit Ethiopians. It fits the natives of North, Central, and South America, if you know their history. And it also fits the Maori people, which is the... The, the, the overall name of the people in the Pacific, okay? Polynesia, Polynesia means, Poly means many islands. There's many islands where they're at. The Marquis Islands, the Solomon Islands, the Fiji Islands, okay? So gather yourself together, which we're doing right now, mentally, spiritually. Physically, Christ is going to gather us together. And that's going to be a great gathering that day. Gather yourself together and hear, you sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. This is Jacob prophesying where his sons are going to be in these last days, the good and bad, okay? Let's go to um, 21st verse about Naphtali. Well, this should be the last days. Naphtali is a hind let loose. He giveth goodly words, okay? And this and most high knows how to put a lot of history just in a couple words. Naphtali is a hind let loose he giveth goodly words. Naphtali natives have a wild nature like a deer and a very calm and inviting, almost passive nature, okay, and innocent like their prey. And the way the white man went out there and took them down, what happened to the brothers also in Australia, 
Some of those are the tribe of Nat Valley. They're like deer, ripe for the slaughter. White man went out there and they just systematically destroyed the Tasmanians, killing Hawaiians. And they, and they never really got up a big fight against whites. They should have got together, but they were just getting taken out the same way you go and fight a deer. When have you ever seen a deer attack somebody? I mean, once in a while, but the most part, they running. They hiding. They try to blend in. So this is, says, they're like a hind. That's a deer let loose. They're kind of wild out there. They're living like deers, okay? That the Naphtali people are out, out there in the jungles of Hawaii and the Polynesian Islands out there and in, in Australia and New Zealand, okay? And they half naked in the jungles. When the murdering conquistadors came to South America and European invaders came to Hawaiian Islands amongst the Polynesian Many islands area, the Naphtali natives were very nice to them. The Hawaiians gave a um, gave a word known as goodly words. Okay, it's known all over the world. The goodly words. Okay, this is something Most High made stick in anybody's mind. When you go to Hawaii, what's that word? Aloha. Whenever they come, the women are very inviting. They're like, they're, they're like little deers. You do what you want. You can domesticate them. They're so cute. And they're beautiful. Hawaiian women, that's that valley. You know, and the aloha is almost like peace, like shalom. It's for goodbye and, you know, how you're doing. Okay, so this is the goodly words. Some of the brothers down in Buenos Aires, which means good air. It's good down there, and, you go, and there are there are Nazca earth drawings, larger than cities. You can't see them, but from air. And there are cities. I should have brought that book. I don't have it. It's packed away. I got a book of this city of down in Argentina, where the city looks like something from space, looked like a chariot, just sat down with a city on it. And that that's that valley down there, okay, and. Wherever we go, we set up cities. Whether it's Aztec, Maya, Olmec, Inca, we set up these cities. So the goodly words, okay, these are prophetic facts that hold more complete truth than just jumping off all the Polynesian people or Japheth because a man told you with no proof, no prophetic scriptures. We read in the scriptures. They're showing you who they are and who they're not. So we have to look at the scriptures of who the people of Israel are. This is from a book by um, Africana de Brosis, Encyclopedia of African American Experience by Henry Louis Gates Jr. All the Polynesian islands were discovered and inhabited by man in the late prehistoric times. Polynesians are believed to have originated by way of Indonesia. See, that's where the lie come in, okay? With evidence of some added mixture from South America. South America. That valley shall possess the South and the West. This one little piece right there. I got some more. They are fairly uniform racially. Their skin is whitish to dark brown. We're different shades of brown. And I see my beautiful people with all the shades from a light, light brown. Okay. It's not leprosy. It's just a light, light brown. Like he said, whitish to a dark brown. This is, and there were no whites mixing in white. When the white man came, they were already looking like that. Okay, this is our people, Jeremiah 12 and 9. Israel's like a speckled bird, meaning very colorful, very beautiful people with all the textures of hair and all the shades of brown. Okay, white man got us tripping. The brother got straight here. He got white in him somewhere. That ain't true. There are nations who have long hair without white, any white people in, in, their, in their lineage. East Indians, okay, Chinese, very close. They got straight hair, okay? Some of them have woolly hair. That's just how people are, okay? Thin nose, thin lips. It's not just you got white in you. Other nations got that trait and that phenotype as well, Okay? They are fairly uniform racially. Their skin is whitest to darkish. They tend to be heavy. You know, fat old Samoans, man, you know, and run fat. 
And not only happened when a white man came and put McDonald's and bad food in their diet, they was good on those coconuts and fish and whatever they were eating in the dietary law. I read where they kept the dietary law, most of them, okay? With broad, massive faces, a high forehead and straight nose, full, well-defined lips, a round jaw, black eyes. However, migrations within the island groups have produced people of varying looks. Polynesians in the coast swamp are taller with finer features, while peoples of the mountains are shorter and more stocky, more Melanesian in appearance, meaning Melanesia means melanin. They're browner. So you're living up in the mountains, you're going to develop a certain way. You're living down in the seashore, you're going to develop a certain way. Okay? You're going to, you're going to react to your environment. In their blood frequencies, the Polynesians, like the North American Indians, differ from almost all other peoples of the Pacific and Asia. Thus, there can be no doubt that Polynesians in general have ancestors in common. So we're telling you that the Polynesians are not like other people in the Pacific, Jaffa, and Asians, Chinese. You got to put it together. They're putting together all these scholars. We're putting together. Here's some more from the scattered Hebrews, Tribe of Naphtali, Black Simba. This is, you know, um, continuation of all the books he's bringing out. I just bring out records so y'all could do your own study. I mentioned Thomas West Journal, 1865. Another guy named King George Tapua. There was a photo of him from Brigham Young University, Hawaii. He was a Negro. You can go online and Black Simba and see the photo of this Negro who looked like he from the ghettos of South Compton and Long Beach over here to, you know, um, South Bronx to um, Brooklyn, okay, down south, the brother. And all his mother, his wife are all Negroes. These are Israelites. This is a tribe in that valley, okay? Okay, say Pacific Islanders, associates with indigenous Hebrews, Andrew Jensen Travels. This is the name of this book right here that this guy um, wrote. He travels through Polynesia and read many journals. The oldest records we wrote, he read them, and he went there. So he read what I, what I have, some of it, and he went there in his journals, went to New Zealand. He went, went to Society of Islands in Tuamatu, in the Arch, um, Archipel, um, Archipelago, um, Tonga, Samoa, Hawaii, Polynesia, and he found that they were Hebrews. You can go get his records. Andrew Jensen travels. Hebrews, Sunday, August 25th, 1895. Get that book. Marshall Islands. White man really, really devastated them brothers and sisters out there, man. He tested nuclear bombs out there, moved them off the islands, and then he tested the bombs, and then he moved them back. A lot of them are sick. They're dying because of radioactivity. White men didn't know radioactivity because he's dumb as hell. But he knew it wasn't going to be good for them. He said, these niggas, man, just test it over there and then put them back. Or well, they can stand there. We can see what radiation does to people. And go check out the Marshall Islands and the Bikini Islands and the Solomon Islands. Those are Israelites out there that this white man is oppressing. Okay. Marshall Islands Chief Larick of the Wojci Atoll tribe of Naphtali, 1822. There's a picture of him in the Marshall Islands, strong, beautiful, um, black brother, dark skin, okay, got straight hair. Islanders taken to um, Sarapalakan, uh, oh, sugar, sugar plantations in Queensland, Australia, okay, and Fiji and Samoa. There was this term called blackbirding where they would it was very prevalent in 1847 to 1904. And what they would do is islanders all over the islands, all in that valley, no matter what island, were enticed on ships. Some were paid, but very low wages, like six pounds a year. But most of them would say, come on for a ship. Look at this. Anyway, they enticed us to come on a ship. And then they would Shanghai them into slavery. Queensland, where they were taking a lot of them, in Australia was nicknamed the second Louisiana because 
They had Israelites slave them down there. They had Israelites slaving in Queensland. Another fact, after the Civil War, Southerners, this is called black burden, enticing the, the Hawaiian brothers into these ships and then locking them down and just taking them into slavery by ship. This is all dealing with Deut uh, Deuteronomy 20, 68. We would go by ships into Egypt. We would go by ships in captivity. Also read Isaiah um, 22, 17, 18. We'll, we'll, we'll read that one, by the way. Let's get some scriptures in here. And I want to always go back to the scriptures to prove who these people are. Isaiah, okay? And we're going to go too much longer. I'm going to just skim through some of these records here that I have. I know y'all wonder where all these, these papers are. This is just so I'm looking at them to see which one I'm going to bring out. Isaiah 22, 17. Behold, I will carry thee away with a mighty captivity and will surely cover thee. He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. There shalt thou die, and there the chariots of thy glory shall be the shame of the Lord's house. And I will drive thee from thy station, and from thy state shall he pull thee down. So if you want to you call any way you want to call it, the ships that we came over here to a Sabbath, the ships that were taking Israelites into captivity and playing sugar plantations all over the planet in the Pacific, the ships of the black Israelites that came from the West Coast here to America, Israelites who were if coming from the, from the defeated kingdoms in Europe to Russia and being brought to East um, Western Europe and out of ports, out of Nantes and, and Liverpool. They were brought here. There were some slaves brought here, very smart, there was records where they show slave masters such and such looking to purchase Russian, English, and French-speaking slaves. Now, where are they coming from? They ain't coming from Africa. They're coming from when we ruled Europe, and they were taking the defeated commoners. They killed off a lot of 30 years war, 100 years war. The plague was killing off all the nobility and the knights, and all that was left were regular guys like you and me. <laughs> and, and the white man came in there, professional guys and took down the rest of that that were there. The same way the Indians lost Americas is how the blacks lost rule of Europe. Okay, internal warfare, then outside warfare, like the Muslims attacked us in Europe and the white man came here. And then all was left with small pockets after the black death, the bubonic plague and the small plots here killed down millions, best warriors. And all was left for little tribes of blacks running around from Ireland all the way to Russia. And it's like, where are they at? Where the blacks in Europe at? Where the Indians at? <laughs> you don't see them no more. But this land was already mapped and ruled in cities everywhere, civilized. Europe was already mapped and ruled castles still sitting around where we used to rule from. 10,000 castles in Germany and France alone where we ruled from, okay? A lot of them destroyed during the first, second world's war, but so many of them still there. Okay, I've seen these books. I've seen these places. I'm like, man, this is two thousand. This is a thousand years. The Dark Ages we ruled in Europe. Okay, from six oh five up until fourteen ninety two, there's there's hundreds of pyramids and records. There's cities and Grand Canyon and and kingdoms out there, Pacific, and stuff underground. There's so many cities that are popping up all over the place. You can't, the white man can't even keep up. That go back to Adam's time, and some of them go back to the time when Israel ruled in Europe, and the Israelites ruled in, in America, in, 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 in the Benimi. There were a lot of kingdoms and cities down there. Okay, Benimi and, and, and the Mu and the, uh, the um, Lemuria, down in middle, middle America. These are 10 tribe cities, majestic cities, okay? You know, that's why Bermuda Triangle is so wild because they're sitting on top of one of those cities and their power centers, their free energy is still rocking. It used to rock over there in the Giza Pyramid because that, that was a power center, okay? but now it's still rocking there. And some of the stuff that they were dealing with is still affecting. Even the Great Lakes is like, Bermuda Triangle, okay? Stuff, ships, ships be getting lost up there in the Great Lakes in plain sight because it's still forces 
of the Most High and forces, technology that we dealt with that the white men don't even know how to deal with. And you see little bits of it and pieces of it. And if you're looking for it, like Israelites do, you'll find it. You know, when you watch these shows like Ancient Aliens and, and all these cartoons, you put stuff together. You see, these guys are really talking, you know, some truth here, but they make fun of it. Put a science fiction channel or they put a little caption in a book somewhere. And <laughs> like all these books are little captions, but together, these dudes were 1800s. They were living amongst the people. Okay. So they were telling you what they were encountering when they were encountering the Polynesians and the Maori people. Okay, after the Civil War, Southerners went to South America and the Pacific. So when the Southerners lost the war to the North, they don't tell you about this. They went to the Pacific and they went to South America to start slaving again, okay, in the 1860s. They started a branch of the KKK in the Fiji Islands called the White Pacific. Look it up, the White Pacific. These were the KKK and the Fiji, and they were the, they were the ones who were doing a lot of slaving out there, enslaving these brothers, okay, and sisters out the tribe of Naphtali. Scott Hamilton, the Stolen Island, searching for the Atta, 1863, slavery. Read that book, speaks about the slavery of the Israelites, tribe of Naphtali in the Pacific Ocean. And in this book, he called, they called them woolly barbarians. Barbarians. That's in the scriptures. That's, that's the Colossians. Okay? See, all these words, when you read the Bible, and not just reading it, but studying it, you see it's a history book. It's not no fantasy here. It's fantasy because you don't know what it is. And this world, is in, we live in a fantasy world, so those, so at least, at you know they, they, they're going to call reality fantasy, but we're living in a fantasy world, okay, right now. This is not the real world. Colossians 3.11, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond, they're free, but Christ is all in all. So what he's saying is the same thing we're telling y'all right now. All these people were Israelites, Okay. They were just going by different names, barbarians, Scythians, were Israelites up in Russia. Okay? Barbarians were, Scyth were, were, were Israelites who, who were Vikings and the Goths and the Celts. They were called barbarians. They were Israelites. Okay? The Saxons were called barbarians. Barbarian means bearded ones. Barbarian from the word Berbers or barber. Back then, barbers were the ones, barbers were the priests, and they would, you could come to a priest's rect, um, rectory or a place and get a bath, get your hair cut, get your, yourself washed. You can also get your ailments because when they did with the body, you can go in there and get your ailments, get you know, it was like a hospital, okay? The barbers were doctors and physicians, okay? That's why you see the uh, barbershops, um, they would have that, that little symbol out front. It was the red, the white, and the blue. Those are the colors of the temple. And the veil, the white is purity. The blue is the law. The red is the blood. This is, I mean, look up the history of that, 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 that colorful symbol of barbers. Barbados. Bearded ones, barber means bearded ones, barbarians, Berbers, the Barbary Corsairs, who were a group of pirates who kept the cross of Christ, and the Golgotha sign showing who they were, Golgotha, the skull and bones. It don't go, it goes further back, further to a positive Christ-fearing group, but they was wild, <laughs> but they did have the skull and bone because they were Christians. You know, the same way we we following Christ wow now, okay? And just coming back. And you go back to the Skull and Bones, it speaks about they were Christians and they had to be wild fighting the whites who was taking them down everywhere they went. It was going to France, going to Italy, going to Rome, going to America. And here's a white man taking over, killing blacks off, okay? And they was, they was oppressing and, and all, all the white ships Bluebeard, Black Bart, 
you know, all them guys were black Israelites that was fighting, you know, against whites, okay, who were the privateers and fighting against whites, okay, who was taken over. See, when the Indians were just like, the, the pirates were, 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 were kind of on, on, on land, were kind of like the um, um, Geronimo on land. The pirates on, at sea were like Geronimo on land. You know, these whites that did so much to them, a couple of them just broke out, and let's just do some guerrilla warfare on these guys on land. So the pirates were just doing guerrilla warfare on the sea. They knew they weren't going to win the war, but they can, they can make these dudes catch hell, you know. And there's a book I said earlier, um, Pirates of the Pacific. Man, the white man did not take down that fairly easy, okay? <laughs> the Pirates of the Pacific, written by a Maori Polynesian brother. So barbarians, they were called woolly-haired barbarians by these, these Scott Hamilton, Stolen Island in this book. Some slaves paid six pounds yearly, but that ain't nothing. Some of them were indentured servants, try to lighten it up, but most of them were slaves. And like, like today, we're getting paid by the slave wages. Kon Tiki, explorer, was partly right. Polynesia had South America, South American roots. This is another record right here. So you can go on to this website here, written by Black Simba, okay, HTTPS, you know, you can look at it right here, this website, and you can go, go on, just go on Black Simba, or go on my and friend me at Karash Yasha Allah, C-H-A-A-R-A-S-H, and then spell Yasha Allah, and I have the article, all this stuff is, you can look at it, you can read it yourself and see all the pictures of Matt Fowley, looking like Negroes, also go on Mount Zion, 144K, and you find a lot of teachings there about the scriptures and things we're dealing with. So bring, bring, bring this down. This right here is a movie capsule I got. New York Post of New York, Tuesday, May 17th, 2005. And I saw this movie one day. I just went down to Sunshine Movie Theater. You can go in there and get popcorn, chill out with a beer, and that's what I like doing. I own the movies with a beer and popcorn. That is my thing. I have to do, have, have done it in a while, but that's cools me out. I might have a little Southern comfort too. But here we go. This movie is is native New Zealand, and when I watched it, I thought it was about a Puerto Rican family. I didn't know it was New Zealand. It's called Once Were Warriors. See that movie. You're looking at Nat Valley history here. Once War Warriors, okay, and see this movie. I thought I was watching a Puerto Rican movie. I mean, brother got high, he's drinking, beating his wife, kids is crazy. They're in the ghetto and they're talking funny. I thought it was like, what is this? Then they in New Zealand. Check this out. Once War Warriors is in New Zealand. This is Maori. These are not Valley people. They're not Puerto Ricans. They look Puerto Rican. They look Spanish, but they're not, okay? They're speaking a British accent. Here's another record here. All right. Edgar Casey Readings, book Stepping Stone, right here. And here is the page. Good book. Got so much in there. It says, late 15th century descendants of the lost tribes of Naphtali settled in Samoa. Right there. They settled in Samoa. You see? Israelites. This is this book. I read it earlier, and this is the page. I'm just giving you the records right here. Okay? You have some pictures of Nat Valley in South America right here. They had herds of llama. Asher in, 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 in Nat Valley here. You see? This is down in South America. You have the king up there in the top. He's watching all the festivities. Nat Valley. These are kings, and they had... The same we had the herds for sacrifice. We had thousands of sheep and goats and heifers. Well, they were doing the same thing with the llamas here. Wherever we went, we adapt to the land. So this is Asher and, 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 and Naphtali. Okay. This is down in Chile, in Peru. 
All right. This is Easter Island, and you have these Moya statues. Most all these 200 statues are facing the east, and they don't know how they got there. The people of the island are called Rapanui, and their elders speak of how their ancestors floated these from the mainland and from other islands where they had the quarries. I mean, how did they stand them up? There's no trees, there's no way. You can't do that today the way they did it. And some of them are way underground, they're buried. You can see their head, but their body's underground. How'd they do it without machines? They said they use spiritual power, a power they called the manna, all right? There's little things you gotta pick up. These are called Moya statues. They face in east. These represent their kings that they've had coming from the one land. Wonder what that one land is. Okay, this is an article out of the way, out of this world. Spooky statues make remote east around in the strangest place you'll ever love to me. This is um this is where did I get this from? This is from by Jim Ferber, New York Post, Daily News, okay, out of New York. I should have the date. Sunday, April 8th, 2012, okay? And this goes into, doesn't tell you about there being Jews, but it goes into a couple little things that shows you that they used to navigate by just watching the pattern of the waves. They can tell if the waves are moving like this, there's a continent over there. If the waves moving like that, no, that's, that's, that's deep sea. That's, don't go out there because you're going to go a thousand miles out there in dead ocean. Then they, then they knew that if they followed the ocean this way, oh, these are islands here. This is home. They could navigate by watching the pattern of the water when it was nighttime. Because they couldn't, they follow the stars, but sometime at day, sometime it's, it's cloudy. Can't see no stars, no sun. They followed the waves. They knew how to read the waves. They could hear. I mean, it's just so much this kind of touches on this article here. All right, this is this little something there that we're going through. This is uh, Thor Heiderdale, this record right here. Thor Heiderdale, Dr. Thor Heiderdale, okay, and he goes into this record. Had the book I mentioned earlier, this is just pages from the book. I don't have the book now. The book is floating around somewhere. I know where it's at. I'm going to get it when I'm ready. Thor Heyerdahl is a widely renowned explorer and archaeologist. He was born in 1914 in Larvik, Norway. In the early days, he was an enthusiastic nature lover, and he was inspired by his mother, who was head of a local museum. So the first expedition is, expedition is to Polynesia, 1937-38, in Northwest okay, America, 1940-41. So he was out in Polynesia. Abandoning his study of geology, Heidedell began an intensive study of testing his theory on the origins of a Polynesian race and culture. It suggested that migrations to Polynesia had followed the natural North Pacific conveyor, therefore turning his search for origins to the coast of British Columbia in Peru while working in a museum. Okay. His theory suggests that the first wave had reached Polynesia via Peru and Easter Island. Um, Balsa Rap. Centuries later, a second ethnic group reached Hawaii in large double canoes from British Columbia, which is Canada. The results of Heidegger's search were later published in his 800-page volume, American Indians in the Pacific, Stockholm, London, Chicago, 1954. He went out there, made a boat, seen if he could do it like the Israelites did it, and he's saying they came from Peru, Easter Island, which is right off the coast of uh, Peru and, and, and California, in Bolsa Rafts, and then from Canada, okay? These were Israelites in a Sabbath. They came in from the 10 tribes, and they went further west. Naphtali shall possess the south and the west. So it goes into a lot of other things. It says some Easter Islanders claim that according to their legends, they originally arrived from the far away lands to the east. Okay, now this east can be taken as we read Israel, the Middle East. See, they weren't from China, they were from the east. 
You see? So this is just, you can get this book. I just met it. The Galapagos Islands speaks about um, the Phoenicians in here and how they were compared to the Phoenicians and the Moors of Morocco. I mean, it's just like, you just, but they ain't telling you the Israelites, but if you know what to look for, you know what you want to find. Okay, that's what it's all about. When you know what you want to look for, you know what you're going to find. Okay, that's what it's all about, man. Okay. Let's go to uh, Judges 5.18. We're going to break this down, Judges 5.18. A couple other scriptures dealing with uh, Nat Valley. Judges 5.18. Scriptures that you're going to need to prove. Judges 5.18 Prophecy that Deborah, this Puerto Rican sister, tribe of Ephraim, tribe of Joseph, okay, she prophesied when she's warring that where, where was her army at? Where were her men? She was doing a roll call. It said, uh, Zebulon and Naphtali were a people that jeopardized their lives unto the death in the high places of the field. Now, the Bible speaks about the field being the world. You have a field of of work, you have fields, you know, fields of careers you go into, and a field can be a wide area. This is a little, now from reading what I just read, this is a prophecy that that valley and Zebulon, okay, you can look at Zebulon, who was a Panamania in Guatemala, Panama, how they up in those high cities and way in the jungles and how they make those cities back there, and then it goes into high places of the field, meaning the fields of the oceans. How uh, Matt Fowley just like to go and live places that are just dangerous. I mean, who wants to go all the way out to the Pacific and live on Easter Island? And living way in the Hawaiian mountains and going out in the Pacific, nothing out there. Okay, just new. These were explorers. These were the pioneers. Okay, we were the pilgrims. Okay, so Zebulon and Naphtali were a people that jeopardized their lives. Okay, so this is one prophecy, Isaiah 9 and 1, of how even back then, they liked to be in places where they are very daring people, Isaiah 9 and 1. Let's go to the history. They were daring people. They liked to do stuff that wasn't too safe. You know, they were living, and that's how they were for them to go out there and just, as Isaiah 9, out there in the Pacific Ocean, not knowing where they were going, but maybe they did, you know, by some spiritual way. Isaiah 9 and 1, nevertheless, okay, nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by way of the sea beyond Jordan in Galilee of the nations. It's a prophecy of Christ and how Israelites would be afflicted along with Zebulon and Naphtali because Zebulon and Naphtali like to afflict them, like to jeopardize themselves then and even now. If you read some history, you'll probably see that, you know, as, as we read on. But it just shows you they would be by way of the sea, okay? So it just shows you the sea is also the people. So they'd be amongst the people and they'd be jeopardizing themselves in the way that they live out there and um, also be on Jordan. So this isn't talking specifically about the Israelites when they were there, it's talking about them scattered abroad in the four corners of the earth beyond Jordan in the Galilee of the nations. I mean, Galilee was a place where many nations were living at. That's where Christ was at teaching. Many Gentiles and people were there. So now what's the Galilee? The nations. Anywhere with a lot of Israelites and nations and everybody there. And you see the people here. This is a very deep scripture. But you got to know the history to know what he's talking about. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They have dwell in the land of the shadow of death. Upon them have the light shined. So we are now in the land of the shadow of death, okay? It's now encompassed the whole earth. I mean, y'all can run from America if you want, but where are you going? Babylon is global. 
you may have a nice little light little plantation, a light little cell in the islands or in Germany, or even go to Israel. But you're still going to catch hell from the white man. He's still there somewhere. You still got to come back and do something. You got to deal with him. The curses are still there. This man is everywhere. Most I put this in this jail where we can't run away. We can't migrate. We can't dig a way out. We can't fly out. We can't fight out. We ain't getting out of this captivity in the four corners of the earth till Christ come. Okay? That's, 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 that's just the way it is. You know, no other way we're we, we going to get out of this. Okay? So the Lord's giving us understanding. Let me go. I did promise I was going to show you some of the ten tribes. Let's get Luke 2. Some of the ten tribes and remnants, you can read 2 Chronicles 30. Read that chapter. That's after 722 B.C. You can read some of the tribes that were left. Not all of them came here. Not all of them went to Assyrian captivity. Okay? That's why you have different textures of books of Israel through marrying amongst our tribes. This slave picture just show you Negroes. But there was Gad coming over here. There was, I got a book where it tells you in 8th century B.C., some of Gad... Asher, Naphtali, and Dan went and dwelt in West Africa. Carthage was set up by Naphtali and some ten tribe brothers. Carthage was destroyed in 146 BC. Those were ten tribes. Where did they go? Some of them became Berbers and Moors, mixed with their brothers in 70 AD that joined them. See, when you see the whole picture, you see just exactly what happened. And who went up into Spain in 711? Who was sold into slavery? Don't believe all the pictures. I'm an artist. I know pictures. I know how to study pictures. And the Bible tells me, and I've got pictures of long-haired people being brought into captivity from Africa, not just short-haired Negroes. Okay? All the tribes, we went into captivity by ships. Luke 2, 36. So we're just going through some of these records that y'all going to find. Luke 2, 36. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Penuel of the tribe of Af Asher. She was of great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. Now, what's this tribe of Asher doing in Christ's time? See, these are the tribes of Israel here. Get a look at that. You can see the tribe of Asher on there. You can see all the tribes of Israel. His Israelites, and then his the 12 tribes. Judah, the fourth born, but he became the firstborn son. But the first son was Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Dan, then Judah. Uh, actually, Levi, then Judah was fourth. Dan is fifth. And then going on down the sequence of birth now. Naphtali, that's six, I have it. Seventh is Gad. Eight is Asher. Issachar is nine. Zebulon is ten. Joseph which consists of Ephraim and Manasseh, their sub-tribes, grandson of Israel, they're not sons, okay? The curse, the most high split us up, but the blessing, they're going to be back under Joseph. That's going to be the name of Scotia that's going to be on the New Jerusalem right here because not these two names are going to be 13. No, that makes it easy. That makes it 12. Then Dan going to be included. They're part of the covenant, which most high will have not broken. 12 tribes as Jacob knew his sons and as the covenant, and Benjamin being the last son the West Indian brothers and sisters. So you see, these are the tribes of Israel right here. Okay? So you have other records here. The Giants of Easter Island. This record here. This is from a book I have. Um, this is from Time Life Books. Okay? Adventure Planner. And uh, I can't see where it doesn't... I, don't, I just don't have where... Where I wrote it down, here's the East Indian, or actually a Hawaiian sister, right here. In the actual picture, she's a little darker than this. You know, it's our people, right here. Let's talk about the Rapa Nui people, and the tattoos, small mantra, Rapa Nui's lucky bird, okay? Every nation had its fall. Easter Island was called by its ancient inhabitants Tipitu o ti hinua. That's T E P I T O O T E H E N U A. It was called the navel of the world. Kind of sounds like Galatians 4:26. Wherever Israel went, Israel went, they called that the center of the world because 
They are the holy people. So they made it a holy land. So the navel of the world, just like Galatians 4.26, Jerusalem, Jerusalem is, is the mother of us all. That's the navel of the world, really, Jerusalem. But they were taking that 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 because we're royal people. Okay, we 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 are we are kind of snooty, you know, we're kind of spoiled. So here we go, hey, we bad. Yeah, we here, we bad, you know, we coming and we bringing Yahweh Shah and Yahweh with us. And this each one of us have our own swagger. Each tribe got their own divineness and own divinity, their own, their own, you know, um, uniqueness. So the apt name for such a remote dramatic spot is a place of surging breakers, perception, um, perceptuous cliffs, towering volcanoes, open windswept slopes, dominating the landscape are the island's famous statues. That's that right here. I should put a scripture right next to that. Jeopardize themselves in the high places. Okay. This place is wild, and here's where the map is at. Yeah, this is the one I got with the map from. I'm just reading it. So this is just some more of the Moy statues right here that they have. Uh, these are all representing the Hebrew leaders and kings, the ten tribes, their kings from Joseph to Hosea, and the tribes of Judah in the south from um, Rehoboam or King Solomon or David all the way down to the fall under Hezekiah. King Hezekiah and went in captivity in Babylon. So these are just some of the records that I have here of Naphtali. You have the the um, oh yeah, there's another page right here. The Polynesians. Okay. Not, okay, here we go. Yeah, it's almost cut off there. The Polynesians. You can get this book. Let me see what name I kind of got a name for. Seems like I have a name for. Okay. Yeah. Native Americans in the Pacific by Sakana. Okay. And it mentions the Polynesians were when Robert Louis Stevenson called God's best, at least God's sweetest work. Our tall, golden skinned people with straight, wavy hair, some fuzzy in hair. They have fine features, almost intimidating. Yeah, I read this part. See, this is just shows you that I read is from this book right here. I'm reading the actual book. And it just goes into how, you know, how, how, how majestic they were. Doesn't say they're Israelites, but they had a Sabbath right here. Okay? They had spiritual power of the elect. They had royals, a royal line of kings. They had priests. Okay? The term Polynesia was coined by Charles. D. Brassus in 1756 and applied to all the Pacific Islands. The present restricted use was proposed by Dumont D. Yervo during a famous lecture at the George Geographical Society in Paris in 1831. At the same time, he also proposed the terms Melanesia and Micronesia. See, they laying these names on us. This is Psalms 48 and 11, I think, 49 and 11, where they put their names upon us. You know, Melanesia meaning brown islands, Micronesia, little islands, Polynesia, many islands, Indonesia, Indian islands. Ain't nothing in the Hebrew, they're not even the people. For the regions that still bear those names, the terms are not particularly good. See, <laughs> I'm probably admitting that. Considering that all the three regions have many islands and small islands. In Melanesia, it is not the islands, but the people that are black. See, Melanesia means black people or brown people, but the islands aren't brown. They're different greens and floral colors, but it means the people, okay? The notion that the Pacific Islands and the peoples are all similar, if you've seen one, you've seen them all, is a total fallacy. So you think everybody in the islands is the same. You think it's all Jaffet. But this goes into very specific characteristics that they're not all the same people. Okay? And that they have different cultures, very specific. Like you said earlier, some live in the mountains. We're looking a certain way. Israelites live near the seashore, live a certain way. Some, like the Rapa Nui out in the, out in the islands, 
They were a little more robust out there on that one little blown island. Okay? So these are just something that you can get. This book right here, I just told you by Seneca. You can get this book. It goes more into it. Okay? So you have the Pacific Islands, Melanesia, Micronesia, Polynesia, and these are the 12 tribes of Israel. If you get this book, this is some good reading. I can go in here and, and, and tell you about the prophet in here who had a temple. Okay? Let me see if I can find it because I know I didn't mark it. You know, but uh, let me just read a little bit. Um, As Israelites had carried the ark with them to Jerusalem, so he declared he would take the ark of Manuaga Puhatu, where he would build the house of the covenant. Rua, R U A, Taho people were gradually being wiped out by European, European diseases, among other things. His plan was in part an attempt to cut off the Tahua from any contact with Europeans. So they were setting this up, yet it was here in Mahua Gapuhatu that he set about building the new Jerusalem. Let's talk about this prophet here. I mean, it's all Hebrew. I'm just one, I just opened it to this page, you know. There's so much here. Polynesians believe themselves to be Israelitish origin and descendants of the people of whom the Book of Mormon is a history. In the following pages, 50 separate similarities. 50 listed from the common use of fringes to the veneration of sacred trees to like a tree of life to demonstrate the Israelite origin of Maori. These attempts to enlist the Maori in Mormon sacred society had no doubt left their traces in the collective imagination of the native peoples of New Zealand. In that you got, you know, they come in with their lies, and then they're coming with, with Christ. A lot of them already know about Christ, but the Maori, as we see, were Israelites themselves, and the white men just come in there, come in there acting like an Israelite, you know, and try, trying to teach them about their culture and about their future. But most of did that so we can hold it. I said... The idea resurfaced in 1904 when Mr. Oliver Bainbridge reported to Cape Times he had discovered a race of strange people in central New Guinea. He referred to them as black Jews in New Guinea. A year later, he gave a talk illustrated by a magnificent series of magic lantern pictures at the Lucan Lucian Theater in Shanghai on his discoveries in a land of the black Jews. Bainbridge dressed for the occasion. And I'm going to kind of end it here because I could just go all day and y'all could buy this book. And it just goes into these people just being Jews like you see the white man, <laughs> you know, being a Jew. Everywhere you go, and that's a Jew, you know. But now we look at them, what are you? You know, we don't know. We're the lost tribes of Israel. Blacks in America are the real Jews, and so are the Polynesians. Stop with the lines. We just proved that wrong tonight. If y'all want to go and say it's wrong, you better come prove it because I got more than this. I could go on reading that book, you know, but I showed you the bulk of what I have, but there's more other things in the book and other records I have, but I don't have them all here, but that's what I carried with me. 49 and 11 of Psalms 49 and 11. The inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. So this is what this man did. The lands he conquered, he called after his own names and even stole names of the people and called after their names. A lot of these names of America are Indian names and you'd never know. You just don't think about it. Like um, Wyoming and um, Ohio means beautiful valley. I know that for a fact. I got a list. I'm going to do that one day. A list of the names in Dakota means the people. Tennessee after Chief Tennessee of the Indian chief of that land. Jeremiah 17 and um, right here in 4. So 17 4, and thou even thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee and I will cause thee to serve thy enemies in the land which thou knowest not for ye have kindled a fire in my anger which shall burn forever. 
if Christ don't come back, it will burn forever. The most I know a lot. If Christ don't come back, and the way it's going now, we can't get our way, get ourselves out of this. We have to be divine intervention. So the Lord, when he says forever, it's going, look at us. There's no way. That lets me know, I don't care what black army, you get missiles, and what you want to do, you know, you're not going to get the white man to love you or free you. He wants to kill us off. That was his thing from the beginning, or make us slaves or kill us off. He don't want us rising up and doing nothing. He don't want us to have our own cities. Or he see, also would have been did it. He let the Japanese build, rebuild their cities. Why not us? Why not the Indians, Polynesians, the Israelites? He won't do that. Deuteronomy 32 and 26. I said I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from amongst men. This is a prophecy of the curse of the Jews. I'm going to read it again. I said I would scatter them into corners, the four corners of the earth. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from amongst men. No one remembers us in the four corners being the Jews no more. But the records are there. Mosiah left this book and he left these records so that we can wake up in these last days and these wise men have left these records so we, Mosiah said, he shall show his words to his his saints in these last days, and I show record things that have been hidden, but now is made manifest to the nation of Israel. You're going to learn this in Africa, in Europe, China, okay, Ethiopia, you're going to learn this there, because they're not the Jews. The Jews are here in North America, North, Central, and South. The natives, Latinas, Hispanic, you the Israelites, the Polynesians, Maori, the black gypsies, Danites, you Israelites. I'm going to do a whole thing on Daniel. Same way I showed you this, I'm a, I got more stuff on there. And it's going to show you the truth. Hosea 8 and 8. Okay? 8 and 8. Is that it? No, that's 9 and 8. Hosea 8 and 8. Israel is swallowed up now. Now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. So Israel swallowed up now. They're destroyed forever. They're not over there ruling with missiles and Israel getting ready to fight Iran. Those aren't the real Jews and Israelites. They're not ruining anything. They need salvation. Salvation of the Jews. So we're all swallowed up now. They swallowed us all up. Under these false names, Melanesian, Micronesian, Polynesian, and all these names that the white man, he's admitting they named them that in the 1700s. He called the lands they conquered after their own names, they want to call it. Whether they take an Indian name or whether they call it their name, Greek name, you're Puerto Rican, that's Spanish, that means rich port, you're not rich. Used to be a port, used to be rich, now you ain't got no ports and you ain't got no riches, but yet you're still Puerto Ricans. you Taino, man. Taino was from Tawab, Hebrew meaning good people. White man named you that out of your own language because you spoke Hebrew. The land you call was Bariqua, land of the noble lords. Yes, you were the noble lords. The tribe of Ephraim. Read about your history. Read about Joshua, Puerto Rican. Okay, Jeroboam, Puerto Rican. Read about these men, great men. Under Moses, he's the one that got us through and fought them battles. There were many famous Puerto Ricans. Deborah was a Puerto Rican, you know? So these are the things we show on our people, you know? of the history. Romans, one more scripture, just to close it out. And this is my second time doing this on uh, um, YouTube, so it may, may take a little while to turn it off. I'm going to see how, the, how I did that before. But uh, Romans 11, 27. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away, no, 26. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. They shall come out of Sion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. The Lord's got mercy on us. Christ is coming to save us. We're going to get our islands back. We're going to get our continent back. We're going to get our minds back. We're going to get Israel, Jerusalem as our holy land, 
back. So thank you all for listening. I praise you how about Shimei Shai. And may he bless you. And may you learn all of your 12 tribe brothers and sisters and love all our brothers as it was in the beginning because Christ is bringing all of, just like Moses, but all the 12 tribes out. There wasn't none missing. All the 12 tribes, when you read Exodus 1, 1 to 6, are coming back, you know. They're coming back. The Negroes and Indians, Latinos, were coming back. I praise Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Amen.